What's up, happy people? I'm Robert Arrington, this is Deer Meat for Dinner. And one of the perks of knowing a lot of the guys at Burris Optics and having a YouTube channel called Deer Meat for Dinner is I get to play with new toys. This is a crossbow I got for my dad. It's a Excalibur Micro 360 TD, which means I can take it apart real easy. And you know, my dad's like 71, 72 years old now. And although he climbs trees like a squirrel, he just can't pull his regular bow like he wants to. So to be more ethical, he shoots a crossbow now. All right, well, as you know, I've been a huge proponent of the Burris Eliminator. It's a scope that's calibrated to my bullet and cartridge so that all I've got to do is press a button, it ranges, gives me my holdover, boom, done. Well, then they came out with the Burris Oracle. It's a sight for my bow and arrow. Basically, same thing. Once you calibrate it to your bow and your arrow setup, press the range, it gives you your holdover. You still have to maintain proper mechanics. You have to have the ability to shoot that range, but it gives you the information. It tells you how much to hold over. And I'm gonna show you. Now, dear friend of mine, Brian Carey, works at Burris Optics. He's, I've been friends with him for 15 years. He said, Rob, we just came out with the Oracle X. This is, to my knowledge, the most technologically advanced crossbow sight in the world, and I believe it came out today. It's going to change everything. So with this, I would basically have to take a rangefinder, range it, and then figure out what crosshair I need to hold over. With this, the rangefinder is built in. So guess what? Out with the old and with the new. We're gonna take this scope off. Look at that. That is awesome. It's two to seven power. And let's get her set up. Comes with this little nifty star wrench. Look at this, like that's your windage adjustment. So that's left or right. This is up and down. Like, are you kidding me? So in 14 seconds, I've got the old scope taken off and this one put on. Throw it up, perfect eye relief. We're gonna sight it in at 20 yards. It's important to make sure you're at exactly 20 yards. God, dog, that thing's strong. Now I know why my dad uses the hand crank all the time. That joker ain't no, no play party right there, boy. Right there. We're just gonna go for center mass right in the middle. Holy crud. <laughs> I swear on my life, that was straight out of the box. I did. Sometimes, ladies and gentlemen, things just go well. Here we go. Good Lord. Okay, so I'm shooting about three inches left. All right, so we shot at 20 yards over here, then we went to 43 yards. Now this shot is 70 yards. Holy cow. It seems like that's a heck of a lot of drop, but you know what? We're about to let her rip. Oh my God. You see the palmettos way back there? See the trailer in the palmettos? My reticle, my crosshairs are above the palmettos. Now, I know a lot of you guys are going to be like, oh yeah, I bet. I swear to God, on my life, I opened that box right there. I came over here, my first shot, you've seen, this is it. I shot at 43 yards, I was expecting to have to calibrate something. It's all, it's, I, I haven't had to, I have not changed anything. So I was getting ready to make my final shot and we heard the drone flying through the trees. It hit a tree and it had to be recovered, but we're still going hunting. Wow. Look at this shot. We're not here, we're fast forward time, ladies and gentlemen, come on. That's no joke, y'all. With the exception of a very minor windage adjustment, all I did was put this sucker on and let her eat. So, I was planning on doing a, like, how to calibrate it, but it's already calibrated, let's go hunt. This is what I'm dealing with. The feeder's gonna go off here in 
any minute. Look at them. See that? The feeder went off and they ran. I don't know. We're gonna walk over and see if we got any blood. I missed y'all. I ain't sure what the heck happened, but... That gun. So guess what? I missed. But that's, that's life. I should have never taken that shot. Just as I was getting ready to shoot, the sun was beaming in my eyes, like this, from over the scope. Well, like an idiot, I took the shot. Luckily, it was a clean miss. Went over there, checked my arrow, we got out of there. We've let it rest for two days. Very light wind coming out of north. So we came around to the south side, we're gonna sneak up there see if we can't get it done this morning. You know what they say, pork chopping eggs. That worked absolutely perfect. I was only expecting to get one, but I got two, and now we're gonna ease in there. Somehow or another, them hogs got inside the gate that's supposed to keep them out. I put that gate there, me and Austin did, so that the hogs can't get in, and that gives the deer and the turkeys ample opportunity to feed. And all I can tell you is that scope is a game changer. Hey, I've said it before, I've said it again. I wanna give the Florida Hunters Network a huge shout out. Guys like uh, Michael Alaguire, who had that awesome bloodhound named Ellie, who unfortunately got killed by the rattlesnake. Team Red Dog, head down, tail up. All you guys that go into helping other hunters, whether you're helping new hunters, or whether you're helping a hunter who needs help trailing game, Florida Hunters Network, all you guys, man, huge prop. If you are a new hunter or wanting to get into hunting, I man, go to one of these groups. Every state has its own group on Facebook and whatnot that you can be a part of. And just tell them, like, I'm new to this. I've never done this. What what should I do? Or, I mean, it's, it's a great community of hunters, like-minded people. Let's go find a hog. So, Came over here, this is where the hog crossed the fence. 
I got a little bit of sign right there, so I know the hog came this direction. It was a perfect shot, so I don't expect it to go more than 70 yards. There's a hog right there. Let me dump it. For those of y'all wondering, this is a big old wild sow hog, female hog. She's actually very poor. The reason she's very poor is because she pumps out piglets as fast as she can pump them out. And uh, very important to take a hog like this off your property. You were watching. The second the feeder went off, they were ready. They ran over there and started eating the corn. Well, if that happens, none of the animals like deer and turkeys have a chance. Heck, those two small ones even pushed their way in to get inside. It's very important as a game keeper, as a game manager, as someone who loves the land to take care of stuff like this. And, uh, still gonna make somebody a really nice meal. We're gonna find the other one, and then we'll see you back at camp. All right, you guys, so we found this first hog, went maybe 50, 60 yards at the tops. And it took us a little while to figure out what direction the second hog went. It went on the same trail as the first hog. So we got past that, we trailed it about 100 yards, and got into a pretty thick swamp. And I feel, me personally, if the hog goes over 100 yards, best thing to do is back out, give it four hours, and then get back on the trail. So what we're gonna do right now, we're gonna load this hog up, go to camp, clean it up, cook some of it, then we're gonna come back here and trail that other hog. But for now, we gotta finish the job with this one. Just made it back here to camp. Here in Florida, we have wood that looks like that. That's the heart of a pine. When you turn it over or split it, that's what the inside looks like. It's beautiful, like a golden brown color. And it's one of the best things in the world to start a fire with. It has such a beautiful smell to it when you're lighting it. And what happens is as it gets hot, it starts exuding like sap, and that sap is what burns. We call it lighter knot, fat lighter, lighter pine. So as our lighter knot gets hot, now we're gonna add some oak wood to it because anyone who's ever cooked on an open fire knows you can't cook on lighter knot. Your food will taste terrible. Now take all your oak wood, and we're just gonna set it right up in here, just like that. Now, I'm gonna let Mother Nature do its job. That needs to turn into a real fire. Now, what I'm doing is something you could do anywhere out in the woods. Now, obviously, I'm at my camp, but I'm just using an oak limb and a rope and a gambrel. I got my fire right over there. This is just something that you could do in the wild Make yourself something nice to eat. Sharp knife is one of the most important things you will ever have with you in the woods. I hung this hog by myself using just one hand to pick up and one hand to pull down. No reason to get the hog higher than you need right off the bat. It's always nice when you're cleaning a hog like this and you know the grill's getting hot right over there. I have not eaten any breakfast this morning. And so before we go back out and start trailing a second hog, I, uh, I'm really looking forward to eating some of this hog. And so I'm not even gonna skin the whole thing right now be super to easy just to continue skinning but i got them to where i want them and i'll show you what meat i'm going to cut if you look real close right here 
you're going to see a seam. God puts those seams there as like little markers. We can come right in here, just like that. And all I'm doing is getting Austin and I something to cook. Everglades seasoning. If you find yourself out in the middle of the woods, you probably won't have any Everglades seasoning with you. But if you're somewhere that you can find it, mm, that's going to be good. Just that's all you need right there. That's that one piece of meat off that ham. I feel good about that, y'all. Now, we're just going to take some of our oak wood and put it right over there. There you go. Y'all want to talk about a little bit of redneck ingenuity? Check this out. There's Austin. There's the drone. We're using the drone to fan the fire to create more coals. See that? Typically, I use a blower. Once you get the fire going, you use a blower and just blow that air on it. And it you can create coals so much faster. I'm like, darn, we don't have a blower. Austin's like, don't worry, I'll use the drone. He wins. Dude. We got a fire now. <laughs> Look at that. That worked a little bit better than I even thought it would. Right there. Perfect. Now that's going to cook down nice, low, and slow. If you were to take meat like this and cook it real fast right away, it'd be so it'd be tough as shoe leather. But low and slow with a little oak smoke sucker's gonna melt in your mouth. Woo! Oh my god, that looks good. That looks so good. Words cannot describe that. That is a flavor so unique unto itself. got the perfect amount of bite it's not chewy but it's not like fall apart tender it's just when you cook wild game that's what you think about that flavor that texture that goodness mm. I guarantee one thing <laughs> I'm gonna have to cook some more because Austin's hungry and I want to eat all this but I will share. All I can tell you is that scope, that Burris Oracle X for the crossbow, that's a game changer. I can't tell you anything other than it's amazing. Put it on the crossbow, shot it, went to the woods, killed two hogs. Now I'm eating one of them. I love it. Appreciate you guys making this possible, everybody. Um, I don't know what's up next but certainly something. It's a great day to be alive, and I appreciate you. But that's all I got for you today. Take care, God bless, and we gone.